Okay, we are live. Welcome. Happy New Year, folks. Happy New Year. Let me just uh, monitor the broadcast here. I Again, I'm not broadcasting on any other platform, so this is YouTube only. So I've been kind of lazy to set it up to broadcast on Periscope and Twitch. So YouTube only. Hello, people. Welcome. Say hello on the uh, chat so I know you're here. Because I know there's a few of you here already. So just uh, say hello on chat and uh, so, so I know. And then maybe we can start. Hold on a second here. Hello, Lakutos of Borg. Hello. Good to see you again. Good to see you. AMG, Happy New Year, AMG. Happy New Year, guys. So uh, our topic of today is, uh, it's, it's a question that's been raised uh, in, in Brax often. And uh, so our topic today will be more of a tutorial to show you exactly. Hello, Shara Kella. Shara Kella, hello. A little bit of a tutorial and Q and A on on this particular setup that uh, I recommend, and some people can't visualize what it is I'm talking about, so I'm just gonna show it to you. So, so I got some parts here to show you, and we got some real parts, and then some picture parts later on, because I don't want to disassemble what I have, but we'll talk about that. So uh, that's uh, that's what's coming up in a moment. Okay, Happy New Year, Feroz. So, kind of a precursor to this. I don't know if you saw, this is kind of an old article. It's been a few weeks old now, but I'm going to show it to you anyway. I didn't, I didn't really discuss it anywhere because there's nothing new here. But it's kind of visual, so I'm going to show it to you. It's a, uh, it's an article from the New York Times that shows location tracking and how much of the mass tracking exists in using phones in you know in the world and and the fact that uh, exactly as I've been talking about for years. You know, the New York Times is acknowledging everything that I've talked about. So it's nothing new to me because, you know, it's exactly what some of my videos are on location tracking and so on. And I'm going to show you this, but just understand my my point here is that the, the uh, concern that I have is that some of you don't realize that a lot of the tracking occurs when people are using your network and you're not aware because you don't have a VPN on it and out, outside people, people not related to you, are using your network or even your own devices and you're using it uh, unconsciously like on a mobile and you don't realize the kind of data that's being collected because of that. And that's uh, that's what we're trying to prevent. Hello, Fear Lutzi. Happy New Year. Robin. Hello, Robin. Was President Trump... Uh, uh, you saw an ad that it, well, let's not talk politics here. <laughs> okay, John Olav, what is what is those shiny things in the back? You mean which one? The one on this side or this side? On uh, screen left, screen right, what? Um, this is a um, uh, from a boat. Those are uh, barometers and such that are you. It's it's made to be put on a boat, and actually, it's uh, it's not mounted on a boat. It's mounted on a wood piece. It was given to me as an award, so that's an award, and uh, so it's uh, it's made of brass and made to survive, you know, like the ocean. So it, it's. If you're talking about that, I'm talking about the lights. Well, they're just lights. Those are the shiny things. Um, lots of, okay, for the video now. Okay, so um, anyway, so what what uh, what um, I want to show you, just, just watch this uh, 
screenshot here. I'm just going to scroll through the website and that's how you can see. So I'm going to go to my computer here and just make this, uh, remove all this. Oops, where did I, where did I put it? Where did I put it? Hold on a second here. Oh, here. There. Okay, so this is the uh, New York Times website. And you can see all these, those little dots. They're locations of people. So here, Los Angeles. Okay, you see all those dots? Each one of that is a phone. This is a track. This is at the New York Stock Exchange. Okay, so this is at this website. At New, it's a New York Times article. So I'm just showing you the this New York Times article. This is at the Pentagon. Look, they're so secure at the Pentagon, but you know everyone with a phone is right there, tracked. Okay, because you got nothing to hide, right? At the White House. Look at this. So they can see every person roaming around. What part of the White House is occupied? What is not? See all that. At and uh, at Mar-a-Lago, President Trump's Palm Beach Resort. You can see everyone there. Okay. So this is uh, this is what this article is all about. It's showing you that around the world, everything we do is being tracked by our phone. So yes, that is from the New York, the New York Times article. Okay. So did I not just? Uh, can you just verify for me if did I have sound while I switched to that? No, I don't recall if I had sound. Was there sound when I showed you that screen? Could just uh, verify for me there. Okay. Did you see the sound? Did I have sound? Somebody could just uh, leave me a comment. Was I talking to myself or you actually could hear that? I, f I forgot to I forgot to check if there was sound on that on that screen. Somebody uh, confirm? Nobody will confirm. So that's a simple question. When I showed you the video, the, uh, the, uh, there was sound. Okay. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Oh, that would have been, that would have been bad. You know, didn't have to have to repeat it. So anyway, sound uh, has been on the entire time. Okay. Uh, thank you, Twist. Okay. So, so the, uh, the point is that that article, again, there's nothing new here. I've been talking about the same issue for, for, for years and I have many videos and I you know it, it, you could watch my videos going back you know four and a half years and you can see me talking about the stuff that the New York Times now just puts in an article something that is always stated to you they even you know uh, well they didn't mention names of companies you know like I mentioned companies like Skyhook Wireless that's one of the providers of the the location data. So let me just explain again. So people have nothing to hide. You don't really care. You don't care that, that that is occurring and that is occurring through a piece of information that they're capturing, which is a data pair called the IP address and the location. Somebody asked me on on YouTube, somebody asked me on YouTube, said, uh, well, I have my own Wi-Fi and there's no one near me so they can't triangulate me because they're not on my network. Uh, you misunderstand how Wi-Fi triangulation works. That that doesn't it does they don't have to be on your network. So that alone is false. So put that aside, because it doesn't matter. The fact that your router is running is enough for the triangulation to occur. Here's another question I got. This one uh, Somebody actually sent me an email, and you know, guys, I don't respond to emails. So please, if you if you want to ask a question, don't ask it in an email. Go go to Braxme and 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 uh, ask me there because I'm not gonna respond to your email. But I'll respond here, you know, on 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 a live stream because the guy was uh, upset that I was talking about Wi-Fi triangulation on their beloved OS called Lineage OS. And they said, why did I state that there's Wi-Fi triangulation on Lineage OS? Lineage OS? Uh, it's, you know, just not right, you know, because uh, it's Lineage OS. It's not going to have, I've been using Lineage OS for years. 
And why do you say there's Wi-Fi triangulation? Uh, gosh, gosh, guys. I mean, you know, if you're going to challenge my expertise about this, I don't know. You better just, you know, I can't respond to you and said, uh, explain yourself. Uh, uh, explain why you think. No, wrong. You watch my videos and you come to me and say, what I said is wrong. Go watch the location videos and tell me that I'm wrong. Instead of me wasting time responding to everyone saying, because you don't believe what I say. Okay, there's the New York Times now saying, yep, yep, they have, they did their own research and confirm exactly what I've been telling you for years, for sucking years, I've been telling you about this and it's ignored and it's now people pay attention because it's in the New York Times. I mean, goodness, guys. I was one of the first people to ever talk about this. One of the first, hello Sergio. I'm one of the first people to talk about this. Again, things I've been talking about for over four years and things I've, you know, mentioned even on AM radio. You know, I'm a radio personality. So I've been talking about this for many, many years. And yes, although I'm only on my first year on YouTube, uh, you know, it's, uh, I have a long history here. So, you know, it's just, it's just frustrating to me when people make these comments or how about all those people on Reddit? Okay, like, uh, well, who's this guy? What does he know? What, uh, you know, uh, I don't believe what he says. Like, okay, so my response to that is, suck you. Okay, uh, how is your mind, body, and spirit tonight? Hello, Michael. So anyway, uh, I've studied this for such a long time. And I was, uh, you know, I, as you know, I'm, I'm into cybersecurity. And <clears throat> I've been studying this for a long time. And I've been, uh, you know, again, doing videos showing, in fact, I've tried to duplicate some of it myself instead of just talking about it. Like I have my uh, geolocation for Wi-Fi triangulation. I have a test site you can test. It's on the video browser threat test. If you watch that video, there's a link there that would do the geolocation test to, to, to show you Wi-Fi triangulation. And then you can see that. Uh, no sound. Why would there be no sound? I can see sound. Do you need a VPN if you don't use? <coughs> yes, of course. Rob? Yes. Yeah, you need a VPN at all times. Okay, so anyway. So the issue is this. The issue is this. You're... you're uh, you're at home, and you say, "Well, I'm, you know, I'm, uh, I'm aware of my security, so of my cybersecurity, so I have a VPN." So a lot of you said, "Okay, yeah, we we get our got our VPNs," and uh, like I do, and I sell my own VPN. It's called Bytes VPN, which is the best VPN you could possibly get because I'm not out to make money from you. It's just there to to create a service. So it's it's a it's a uh, VPN that is of more benefit to you than is of to me. So anyway, the uh, the uh, uh, the bytes uh, the bytes uh, I mean sorry the uh, <coughs> the VPN is available on your devices. So you load it on your computer. So you install the software on your computer. Then you got your cell phone. So you install the computer on your cell phones. And then maybe you have multiple phones, maybe you have family members, then you have to install a VPN on your iPad, you have to install a VPN on your Samsung TV, you have to install a VPN. I mean, by the time you get done, if you have kids, a spouse, and you know, uh, a typical family with multiple devices, iOS devices, and so I, IoT devices, Internet of Things devices. By the time you, you, you figure it all out, you will find out that you may have 30 devices that need to be on the VPN. 30. Not inconceivable at all. This is very common in a typical family. 30. Okay? Maybe you have less. Maybe you have 20. The point is, you will find out, <clears throat> you will find out that there are many times when you're not going to use the VPN. Many, many times, especially on mobile. You wake up in the morning, one of the things about the VPN is that you, you load the VPN on your phone and in sleep mode, when your computer is working in the background in sleep mode, 
the, uh, the VPN is not on. So I don't care what they say about kill switches. When the B VPN is not on, is work uh, when the phone is sleeping, is working in the background without the VPN. VPNs do not power up on sleep mode. And the reason they do, don't do that is it takes up a lot of power. So VPNs don't run on the phone when you're in sleep mode. So if in effect, if you get email on your phone, therefore the email does not go through the VPN. Now you might say, who cares? Again, there's a lot of videos you got to watch to understand all this, okay? There's a lot of uh, videos you got to watch to understand all this. But one of the attacks that, uh, that one can do is called a beacon attack. This is where I ping your phone through email. This is one of the attacks I describe in the email video. Too bad nobody watches my email video. So, you know, I, I don't want to repeat that video over and over. I've d done it like three times now and people don't care. So, okay, you don't want to watch it, so I won't tell you. But it's in that video. There's several videos about it. And I created an actual attack where I actually wrote, wrote the attack, <clears throat> demonstrated it live. And what it is is that I can actually send you an email and the email will beacon your location. It will ping you and cause your phone to reveal your location because that's how stupid these email products are that they actually do that. I tested it and it works. And uh, it works uh, unless you use uh, Thunderbird. Thunderbird is the only one that will not work. Or if you use a webmail, it won't work either. But if you're using your typical uh, iPhone mail, you're t using you know, your uh, Microsoft mail, Outlook, this, that, and all these typical products, your Android, Google mail, whatever is built in as an app for mail, it will in fact respond to a beacon attack and what will it return? It will return your IP address and in uh, potentially also your location. Okay, so it's very possible for that to happen. So I demonstrated the fact that I can capture not only your IP address, uh, <clears throat> but uh, uh, using that IP address, I can now go to a reverse IP lookup database there are many of those selling that database. You can download it. You can download some trial ones. Uh, there's many suppliers. Uh, you know, uh, one of the companies is uh, Skyhook Wireless. They're not the cheapest, but there's a lot of them. Some of them, you know, the data is not as good, and some of them are a little bit better. But the uh, the uh, the idea the idea, guys, is that if I get your IP address, if I get your IP address and you're in that database, I can find out who you are, okay? It doesn't matter if I sent you spam mail. I could basically spam everyone around the world and based on the beacon attack, the spam will return the IP address, which I can then look up and say, oh, that's Mike. That's Mike, okay? And he lives on this street. I know who he is exactly. That is shown from the reverse IP lookup. So, at all costs, people, at all costs, you have to always prevent the, the, a third party from getting these two pieces of data as a pair. And the two pieces of data you do not want to ever reveal, even from a standby device that you don't use all the time, like an iPhone, is the VPN and location. Anytime you go to any website, any app, this was revealed in that in that uh, New York Times article that I just uh, I showed you at the beginning. Okay, that article. Go read that article. That art. Maybe I'll put a link in on the video. Uh, that article again. It's nothing new. It's the same thing I've been talking about. So you can watch my location video and get the same thing. But you know, maybe they sound better because it comes from the New York Times. So it doesn't come from Rob Roxman. It comes from the New York Times. Hello, Double J. Hello, Michael. So, so. Uh, <clears throat> Uh, so the the the, uh, the thing is that I don't want to ever reveal my IP address, even in you know even unintentionally, because if if a an app gets access to location data and that IP address, which it will if the VPN is not running, then you will be screwed. You will be screwed because then they can sell that data pair, which they do. They do sell it. Uh, there are thousands of apps that sell a, the location and IP address data pair. 
You do not want to be a victim of that. By the way, I checked. You know, I, I'm very careful what, what I do. And I found out that I am not in the location IP address database. 90% uh, of you probably are, but I'm not. And the reason is because I've always used VPN and am very careful what apps show up on my phone. Very, very careful. Okay? So, <clears throat> even with my kind of caring about, you know, how a cell phone may track data if it's not on a VPN, I'm going to tell you that's very difficult to always use a VPN because there's so much you have to do. You got to make sure that the VPN is running, which means don't use the phone unless the VPN is on. And many times you make a mistake because you get a call, you go to Google and you do all that and you forgot, Zuck, the VPN was off. And then you just revealed your data and that data then gets sold. So you want to prevent that. That's one of the things that you want to prevent so you're not a victim of this, these companies that sell this data. Now, in reality, so I've been trying to do this myself. And I, of course, I sell a VPN so I can put a VPN on every, every phone. How do you check? Well, it's not easy for you to check. You have to, Ryan, you have to have a subscription to one of these services that have the location database. So I don't subscribe right now. You know, I've done trial, free trials and such, but I don't subscribe at the moment. So yeah, it, it's not, it doesn't even cost that much. You probably... Uh, you know, <clears throat> get access for 50 bucks a month or something. Uh, I'm going to guess like 50 bucks a month to have access to the database. Okay. A VPN kill switch is not going to be effective when it's on standby in sleep mode because some of these apps run in the background. So what, what I've determined is that even for me, it doesn't really work to rely on putting software in every VPN. It's too dangerous. So what I've done, what I've done is said, I, I'm going to redo my own, my whole network. So I've been working on this for, for a while, and then I, I got it completely running uh, these last uh, couple of weeks. I, I put in a completely wired, wired VPN in my house. That's what we're going to talk about. It's a wired VPN. Again, uh, some of you know I sell this little device. It's a Brax Wi-Fi router. Okay, so this is a Wi-Fi router. So you plug it in and, and, and it becomes a uh, Wi-Fi. But what I wanted to do was not use the Wi-Fi. I said, can I use it wired? And I'll explain the reasons for the wired. Uh, the problem is I want to cover the entire house. And I want to cover it with a VPN. And it's really difficult to do that, uh, you know, with a VPN. Uh, to cover, let's say if your house is a little bit larger, it's hard to cover the whole area. You actually need many, many routers. I have several routers in my house. And uh, and what I actually wanted to do was do this. I wanted to have, at each part of the house, I want to have two routers. And so my setup is not, it's not, uh, it's not that, you know, not that basic. So my setup is I have two, two routers at, at certain parts of my house and one is a vpn router and the other one is a non-vpn router okay so so got it set up so so i have like uh basically i can cover most of my house with uh you know two sections so one part of my house has a vpn router and a non-vpn router and uh, and then I have an extra router in a third location, but uh, at VPN only. But uh, what I what I wanted to do was make sure that uh, my family has access to a non VPN router. The reason is for Netflix, so the and gaming. So the only reason for the non VPN router is for Netflix and gaming, and maybe banking. Because, you know, banks uh, will block the VPN in some cases in some stores. So, you know, you don't want to have a, an emergency where you can't access the Internet because you, you uh, are routing to the VPN. And some of these bad companies, bad companies, uh, block VPNs. Uh, example of a company that blocks VPNs, UPS. So since I do a lot of shipping, 
You know, that's one of the issues. They block, uh, you know, uh, my transactions and they don't let my transactions go through because I have a VPN. So I got to call them up and have them unlock it. It's a pain in the butt. Okay. Uh, hello, Gary. That is your call sign. Okay. <clears throat> Not going to give you my, my call sign, Gary, but uh, glad to uh, glad to know that's your call sign. So anyway, so yeah, g gaming, uh, you want to skip the VPN so, you, uh, so you, you get a little faster performance. I don't worry about gaming creating data because you, you don't have any fixed identity on gaming. So don't really care if, uh, hello, Jay. I, I don't really care if, you know, an Xbox is going outside of a VPN. But I want everything else, especially apps running on a phone, especially apps running on a phone, to always be on a VPN. So anything that, you know, by default it should be on a VPN. To not be on a VPN should be the exception. So the only way to do this, the only way to do this, guys, is, is to set up your network so that some of your traffic or most of your traffic goes on a VPN and then some do not. Okay, so I'm going to show you my setup here. So this is my setup. And let's show a little screen here. Okay, this is my setup. Can you guys see that? Does your VPN service accept Monero or BTC? Uh, yeah, but, um, you know, since the price of uh, BTC is uh, too uh, too shaky, uh, why don't we uh, temporarily uh, switch to uh, Amazon gift cards? You can buy Amazon gift cards anonymously, and then you can pay me with an Amazon gift card. So you can buy it from a store, okay? And that's a way to, to do that. So that's a gift card that I'm happy to accept, okay? So anyway, so there's my setup there. So the, the one that's smart modem is the, uh, the cable company. So in my case, that's Spectrum. Mama Goo, hello, okay? Can you can locate a call sign too? Yes, I yes, of course anyone can locate a call sign. Go go to the FCC database or to you don't even need to go to the FCC database because we're all on that uh, Q, QRZ. Yeah, so yeah, I mean if I gave you my call sign, then you look me up on QRZ. So we don't want to do that. <clears throat> Although I don't put my uh, address on QRZ. Or the FCC that they don't have my address. Okay, so um, anyway, that's my setup there, and I, I want to show you the, the parts there. So the end result is two Wi-Fi routers. So the way that I have that set up is I have two. Hello, uh, Stephen. Stephen Govin. Okay, I don't have my home address, Gary. I have a PO box. Okay, so I have. Uh, I have uh, the modem from Spectrum, and that uh, immediately is fed to the. F Look at the first part there; it goes to the Wi-Fi router. So, uh, you know, uh, any Wi-Fi router. I, I was going to put a picture of our Wi-Fi router, but um, any Wi-Fi router will do. And uh, whatever you currently have, then you can use that. And in the back of that router should be extra ethernet ports okay there should be extra ethernet ports at the back of that router so you're going to plug into that the brax router this is the brax router now this is called brax wi-fi router but i renamed this to brax router because the way i'm going to configure this is i'm not going to use this with a wi-fi we're going to turn the wi-fi off it actually be automatic the wi-fi will be off okay so this is as you guys know is a raspberry pi Raspberry Pi 4. Raspberry Pi 4 has uh, gigabit Ethernet, gigabit USB 3 ports. So this is perfectly fine as a gigabit router. Okay? Only a Pi 4 will do. So if you have an older older uh, Raspberry Pi, it's not going to work. So this is limited to Raspberry Pi 4. Okay? Then to this route, router, so that's now right where that Brax router is. Okay, to that I in, I add an Ethernet adapter. Now let me just tell you what this Ethernet adapt, adapt, adapter is. 
uh, I think it's about 15 or 16 bucks or so and this is from Amazon and what it is is a gigabit gigabit Ethernet adapter so that's gigabit Ethernet Ethernet and then the other end you'll see the end is blue is USB 3 so it should be blue okay the end has to be blue if it's not blue it's not gonna work okay so you see the blue end there. So this is a uh, gigabit Ethernet. So USB 3, USB 3 gigabit Ethernet. And then you plug it into the Raspberry Pi to the blue ports. So you can see the blue ports there, which is USB 3. Now, why USB 3? Because we're going to pass gigabit traffic here. You're going to route all the traffic in your house. There could be 30 devices. Okay? You're going to route all of it to this. This is going to get stressed. The entire network will go to this. So then you plug this in to one of those blue ports, and there you have it. Now, you, you're going to have then two Ethernet connectors. One goes there, and this one goes here. Okay, so you have two Ethernet. So this one goes to the other Wi-Fi router, Wi-Fi router 1, and this one then put an Ethernet cable on here, and you would feed that to something called a switch. Okay, and so let me show you what a switch looks like. Okay, that's a switch. Okay, this is a fancier switch. Now, there's some cheaper, there, you can buy a switch for 10 bucks, but it's not going to be as good. What you want is a gigabit, gigabit uh, switch. So this switch that I'm showing you here is a gigabit switch. So it can handle, uh, you know, one gigabit of, intern of Ethernet traffic. So that's what I have. I, that's the actual picture of the, the, actual, uh, the actual unit that I have. So that's what I ordered. And if you look at the chart again, let's go back to the to the uh, to the chart. The switch then you you plug in one of those ports to another Wi-Fi router that you can buy any, it doesn't matter which one. And so now you have two Wi-Fi's. Now the reason for the switch is that you can expand your network, you can plug in other devices to these ports including other Wi-Fi routers so you can extend it in your house now uh, if you have a bigger house and you don't want to you know wire Ethernet all over your house what I use and I don't have a picture of it here but what I use is a power line so what I do is uh, I plug in this Ethernet port you plug it into a, a uh, wall socket power socket and then then you can plug Ethernet into it, so and then you can put it at two locations, one next to one of these devices, and the other one remotely, and that way you can extend your network without having to do any wiring. Okay, that's it. No, it doesn't matter uh, uh, what the the network equipment is. No, just you know any normal, typical brand doesn't matter. Uh, obviously, you want a, a router that does AC, 802.11 AC is a little bit faster. Brands such as Asus, you know, Linksys. And if you want to spend extra money, then you go Cisco. So, <clears throat> so it doesn't matter. Now, I don't rec recommend this, by the way. Some of you have the setup, and I really don't recommend this. And if you have the setup, I would suggest you undo it. Some of the cable companies sell you a modem with a Wi-Fi router built in. So on that chart, on that chart up there, on the chart up there, the modem and the Wi-Fi router is one unit. Okay? You don't want that. Uh, I can't tell you how many times I have so many people have difficulty setting this up because uh, of that configuration. Plus, they charge you extra money. What you do is have a modem. You can even use your own modem. You don't have to pay for it in a cable company. And, uh, and then... Uh, buy your own Wi-Fi router. You're going to need at least two anyway. It's a, a show, oops, trying to figure out a point here. You're going to need two anyway. So one for the VPN router, 
one for the that router. Now, uh, you can buy a Wi-Fi. I, bu I bought a extra Wi-Fi router for like 50 bucks. So a typical Wi-Fi router is uh, 50 to 150 typically. So uh, that's that's what I use. But this now let me just tell you the advantage of the setup here. And this requires some planning because of the wiring. You have to plan it out. But the the way this works is that you you now have in every part of your house you have now an availability of a VPN. Now wh why why is it uh, help, helpful to do it like this? <clears throat> what what happens is when you're using this kind of methodology to what I displayed here, it's you do not have to put any software on the devices. The devices just logs into the, in this case, Wi-Fi wi Router 2. So if you have a phone, you connect the phone to Wi-Fi Router 2. If you have a Samsung TV, you connect it to Wi-Fi Router 2. Or if you have an Xbox, you connect it to Wi-Fi Router 1. You may want to connect your TV that has Netflix to Wi-Fi router one. Uh, any other IoT devices, cameras, and all that, you always connect to Wi-Fi router two. All of your computers, you always connect to Wi-Fi router two. So you don't have to think about it. No software. You don't have to do any software. Okay? Can you uh, cut off the Wi-Fi on the AT&T router? Uh, it's it's difficult because of this the way that's set up so you know just return return the modem plus router combination and just get the router only from them say just can you just change this to modem only and then buy your own router can I suggest a good modem uh, no because I it's kind of dependent on your your uh, like spectrum uses a uh, typically a modem called ARIS, A-R-R-I-S, and I don't know, you know, it's been problematic for me, so, but that's what they give. So, ARIS is, uh, is what they give me, and I just take what they give me. I, I use their modem so that they can do the support. Okay, so the modem is from them, uh, but past the modem, it's mine. I don't want to have anything, I don't want to have anything, uh, you know, to have to worry about anything beyond the modem. They can do tech support up to the modem. From then on, I take it over. So in my drawing there, the modem is wired to the first Wi-Fi router, which I labeled as Wi-Fi router 1. So it's connected via Ethernet cable. Okay, so this is what is used to connect the uh, modem to Wi-Fi router 1. Okay, so presume you all know what Ethernet cable looks like. Some of you don't know what Ethernet cable looks like anymore because you're always on Wi-Fi. Okay. Uh, Spectrum is no better. What uh, what makes you think Spectrum is any better? It's uh, Then it has no router functions. Uh, no. you uh, The modem just gives a uh, WAN port and that goes into the Wi-Fi router, the first router, which is yours, hopefully. So what I label on there's Wi-Fi router one is your Wi-Fi router, which could be any brand, like I said. So uh, I think my 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 not I think I know my Wi-Fi router one is an airport Apple Airport Extreme. Okay, so actually I use Apple. I I have uh, several Apple modems. So my primary modem, my primary uh, Wi-Fi's are Apple. So I have a Apple Airport on one side, uh, and then, and then. So on, in in my case here, my Wi-Fi router one, the open one, is an Apple Airport Extreme, and then my Wi-Fi router two, is my spare Apple Airport. And then on the other location, I have um, a uh, Asus. So, and then Linksys, Linksys and an Asus, okay? So, it doesn't really matter what the brand is, they all work the same. But, best to buy a commercial one, not the one given by your, your carrier, because they're going to configure it their way, and you may not like the way they configure it. So, I don't like to use anything that's provided, especially with Wi-Fi, provided by the uh, carrier, because, you know, it ends up being uh, 
more more technical issues than it's worth okay it's wi-fi routers are very simple you know you plug into the back they come with extra ports just like that thing mark that thing that's marked switch over there there's multiple ports uh the one that you have to worry about is the one called wan the wan port and that's where you stick your connection from the no a switch you can plug anywhere sorry switch you can plug anywhere so let me just review again from the modem you plug into wi-fi router one and you have to use the port that's marked when w a n on my uh, apple extreme it's the only one that has a unique symbol so on my app my apple extreme there's an airport extreme there's no label that says when but only one port has a little circle on it the other ones have arrows so obviously the single one that's unique any if one of the ethernet ports is uniquely marked on the back of the router that is the when port okay uh, can i cut off the wi-fi uh, okay so anyway so uh so from the modem you wire it like this so now from again starting again from scratch here we go from the modem you plug this into the modem and then you plug the other end to your Wi-Fi router WAN port. So that's the first connection to the WAN. W-A-N. Okay, that's always the first one. Okay, after that, you don't have to worry about that anymore. Okay, so one to the WAN port. Okay, now the Wi-Fi router then will have additional ports and that's what you feed into the Brax router. So in my case here, the... Uh, the uh, incoming network goes into the standard slot of this uh, Brox Wi-Fi router, okay, which is the standard Ethernet. So that's incoming. Okay, so it goes in there. So it goes from your existing router and you wire into. So this, I'm plugging in right now so you can visualize it. This is incoming. Okay, that's incoming traffic. Okay, from the internet. So that's the internet. The internet goes in there. This now is outgoing. So this plugs into one of the blue ports. So now you got that. That end then is incoming or going to the switch. Okay, so that connects to the switch and I showed you what a switch looks like so it goes to one of those ports in there okay so you plug it into any one it doesn't matter which one okay plug into one of them and then the reason for a switch is so you can spread out and have you know you don't need a switch if you don't have, need that many ports but uh, you 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 may want two switches you may want two two switches and in, in my case let me just show you here in my chart again. In my case, I actually have two switches. I plugged in a switch on the Wi-Fi router one. There's a switch there too. And then there's a switch on the Brax router. And the reason for that is so I can put a open router, non, a non-VPN router, Wi-Fi in a different part of the house. So the idea is to, to do this in pairs. If you wire your house like this, Okay, if you wire your house like this, let me just tell you what happens. You don't have to set up any device. You, you make a decision when you uh, have Wi-Fi, you make a decision about if you're going to be on the VPN or not just from the Wi-Fi name. You don't need to install anything. Now, where's, wh how is this even better? If your family or friend says, can I borrow your Wi-Fi, send them over to the VPN one. That is the only Wi-Fi you will give your friends and relatives who visit. They will only get this one. The reason is they're going to come to your house. They're going to use their sucking phones. They're going to sit around at the dining table. And while you're having a conversation, they're going to be tapping on their phones like, you know, typical millennials. 
And while they're doing that, typing on their phones, the apps are capturing your the GPS location and sending your IP address and your data to those commercial places without you knowing it, since you cannot install your VPN on their devices. This is one of the biggest flaws with using a VPN if you don't understand how the data leaks out. The data leaks out from anyone using your network. Anyone. So plan this out, guys. So if you are using my, my software from before, this is an improvement now. This is like step two, which is to go completely wired. Okay, so this is the wired solution. So this allows you to go completely gigabit. Uh, by the way, there's no limit. If you use my VPN, this is not subject to the uh, six user, six device limit. You can put as many devices as you want to access the network. So, and because it's gigabit, you can have, you know, as many routers as you can handle, uh, given your traffic. Obviously, if you have too much traffic, it's going to slow down. But uh, how do you find out they got your IP? You have to buy the database, but you have to assume that uh, either they have it already or you got to prevent it from ever getting to that database. That is a very big deal, guys. You do not want your... IP address with location in the reverse IP lookup database. You do not want it to be there. Again, read that New York Times article that uh, I showed you at the beginning of the video. And uh, I'm telling you that uh, there are many companies selling that data. Many, many companies. Uh, the New York Times said there are a dozen companies selling that location data. I actually... Uh, I didn't research that far. I, I think I identified around six. So they said there are 12 companies doing uh, selling that location data. So uh, so like I said, you know, I, I know I know around six. So there's more. So you, I, I checked one, the biggest one, which is Skyhook Wireless, and I'm not on that database. I'm going to tell you what I actually did. So I... Because, you know, it costs money to subscribe to each of these databases. I'm not going to go pay money. You know, it could cost me thousands of dollars to subscribe to all of them. So I said, uh, so I went to Skyhook Wireless and I did, they have a trial period as a developer. So I said, okay, I'm going to integrate uh, Skyhook Wireless to my network. And uh, I sign up to their, to their uh, developer plan and then they give you a copy of their database. And then I checked their database and uh, I wasn't on it. So I went back to them and said, your database is flawed. I'm not on it. And they could never explain it to me why I was not on it. Now, obviously, I know why I'm not on it because I'm one of the careful people uh, because I want to make sure that, you know, I always watch what apps are running on my phone with location on. I have a video, a very old video from last January, I believe, where a year ago already, where I sh told you how to set your iPhone so that you don't uh, get location tracking from these apps. So that's in another video. So go switch those. So you have to do all that and, uh, and not accidentally turn on location for an app that's selling the data. Uh, one of the danger ones, for example, I, I hate uh, apps like Yelp, Craigslist. By default, no app has location for me in my case. But then I'm forced to use location for Yelp, for Craigslist. It really upsets me. Hello, Bratwurst Power. It really, really upsets me because I know that if you I make a mistake, like I use Yelp and I reveal my IP address and location combination that they're going to sell it. You know, these companies don't make money, you know, without having to sell that data. So that's how they make money. They sell the data. So thousands of apps do that. So the Weather Channel is uh, one that was caught by the LA Times. That they, the Weather Channel is owned by IBM. So IBM was selling that location data, just to show you. So anyway, so this setup, what I'm describing here, are your phones a high security or are voice? Yes, uh, Rob. Yes, voice over IP. Uh, is, this is a different video which I will make next week, but I want to, uh, I'll talk about it in a moment. Uh, the uh, uh, Kalia, Kalia Law Act, Kalia Act, and how that relates to voice over IP. So yes, the, uh, it, to be blunt, 
voice over IP is captured uh, by your carrier and is tracked because that's the law. By law, they have to track voice over IP traffic. So if you're on Skype, you know all that, yes. So by law, they have to allow someone to tap into voice over IP in the U.S. Okay, that's U.S. law. Each country will be different, probably even more extreme in other countries, but in the U.S., voice over IP, that's why I don't use voice over IP. Okay? Because, you know, I don't need to get to to get uh, to get uh, 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 tapped. Okay? So, do you, do you all understand the setup here and what, what I'm trying to do? So, with this setup, with this setup, guys, I've set up a network where it's the least amount of maintenance. Uh, in order to do this, the, the, uh, you, there's a lot of parts, as you can see. You need a modem from the carrier, and you need at least two Wi-Fi routers. The first one is your main one. It'll be your gateway. So the first router is called the gateway, and it has to have something called DHCP enabled on that one. Okay, well, they all have to have DHCP. Okay, then the next one you need is a Brax Wi-Fi router. This is available at my store at rob.brax.me. And what happened is when you use this in a wired mode, so if you plug in an Ethernet adapter to this, the Wi-Fi will automatically shut off. Okay, so it detects it automatically. So you plug in the wi when you plug in the uh, the uh, the extra Ethernet and reboot it. It detects that it goes into completely wired mode. And again, this is a Pi Four, and uh, you can buy your Pi Four and all the parts. You can buy all this. The software is only ninety nine bucks. So you buy your hardware and. And you can buy the software for 99 bucks, or you can buy it with the hardware. Okay, I don't sell this though. I just sell this. So if you want just the hardware, I can just sell you the chip. Okay, if you want to just buy your own Raspberry Pi because you like a nicer case or whatever, I just sell you the chip. And just put the chip on here. There's a slot in the Raspberry Pi. Just put the chip on right there. And that's it. Then put the power supply in here and it's ready to go. Okay, so you need this Ethernet port. You need a switch. Maybe you don't need a switch, but most people need a switch. And, uh, and then uh, a second Wi Fi router. So those are the parts you would need. Uh, you can get a Wi Fi router for as cheap as uh, 50 bucks from Best Buy or you know up to uh, 150 bucks so in a range so depending on what you want to do with it it doesn't matter which one you don't have to spend all that much money it's it's uh, hello crime stoppers is k5 CW you are <clears throat> okay so uh, so that's uh, that's my setup again the simplicity of this setup now I don't have to care about this. Even when I broadcast, I just say, okay, what am I going to use? Do I need to uh, be on a VPN or not? Uh, what do I connect my Samsung TV to? Again, my, my rule is Xbox connects to Wi-Fi Router 1, which is not a VPN. Uh, any device that needs to access Netflix, I go on the open one and or Prime. Any device that uh, needs to go on VPN goes on Wi-Fi router too, which is the default unless somebody's watching a movie or playing a game. And in emergencies, you still need access to Wi-Fi router one for banking because banks want to find out your exact location. So that's uh, why you need both. Okay, so again, it's a little bit different than the one. It's a little bit more complicated than the usual uh, this also still works in the same old way like before, which is stop at the uh, Brax router, stop here, and use this as a Wi-Fi by itself. You can stop there, and this will be a VPN. So you can do that. 
So you don't need all the fancy setup if you want. That the, the, the full setup here is for a larger network where you have to wire your house and with multiple routers, then you may need this complete setup here. So if you, you can just stop here and just buy this and stop here. You don't need anything else. You don't need this. So in that chart, this is the, is the third device. You plug this in and this becomes Wi-Fi. Okay, so in a small apartment, that's all you need. So modem, Wi-Fi router one, and then this becomes Wi-Fi router two. This comes with Wi-Fi by default. This has Wi-Fi, but when you plug this in, the Wi-Fi turns off. Okay, now the only problem with the Wi-Fi on a Raspberry Pi 4 is it does not have AC mode. It does not have 802.11ac, which is the fast Wi-Fi. So there's a limit uh, to the, uh, you, you get around like 50 megabits on the built-in Wi-Fi. So if you want to go higher than 50 megabits, you need to buy a separate AC, 802.11ac uh, Wi-Fi, which is very common. Uh, how would I hook that up to a laptop? Uh, the switch, see that switch, well, you can do Wi-Fi to Wi-Fi router too, Mr. H, or the switch. Get your cable. Plug it into the switch. Plug the other end to your computer. Yeah, you can do no Wi-Fi. Wi-Fi is not, you don't have to use Wi-Fi. That's what the switch is for. Plug it into the switch. Plug the other end to the laptop. End of story. All of the uh, mechanism for how it works is automatic. Yes, so the, this tunnels traffic to the Brax VPN network or your own VPN if you don't want to use Byte's VPN. It does work with, this works with uh, most VPNs. Though I don't give you instructions, this works with uh, most VPNs. Uh, I think I've tried it with uh, PIA, Proton, Pure VPN. So, uh, so I'm sure it'll work with most VPNs, but obviously, if you're gonna, if you do not have a VPN, I suggest use mine because I'm gonna pre-configure it. If you use my VPN, then you don't have to configure it. It's I, I ship it to you already. I ship you the chip already pre-configured. Okay, I'm not f familiar with what you're saying. Just wondering if it meant just more junk spam. So the tunnel traffics to the Brax VPN. Yeah. Okay, so this is this is what for for those of you who are more expert here. This is called SOX five routing. So we're routing the entire internet traffic through this. This becomes a, a gateway. You're old. Gary Beasley is old. Uh, what makes you older than me? I remember three hundred baud. What makes you so special? I remember mainframes using 300 baud. Mainframes. I used them. Mainframes using 300 baud. Okay. So uh, does that make sense now? Do you, you understand this? So again, you can buy your own wife, uh, Raspberry Pi 4 with all this. Or, or you can just buy the software by itself. So you can just buy the SD card. If you're in a different country, if you're not in the U.S., buy your own Pi because it's kind of a expensive to ship it when this is really cheap wherever you are. And they'll charge you like, you know, 25, 25 to 40 bucks just to ship it plus tax for something that, you know, you can buy for 50 bucks wherever you are. So, yeah, you don't want to do that. Okay. So anyway, this is uh, uh, eight-inch floppy. So, so did you know that uh, Google Google uh, blocked that because they thought you were talking about something bad? Okay. Uh, I remember when Punches was a pilot. <laughs> okay. So uh, so anyway, that's the uh, that's the tutorial on. 
the Brax Wi-Fi. Again, this has been asked to me so many times. So, so if anyone wants uh, information, then just you can watch this video again. And uh, uh, 50 gigabit can allow me to do what exactly? 50 gigabits? No, 50 megabits. 50 gigabit? My goodness, we don't have gig. We don't have 50 gigabit uh, in our in our home. 50 megabit? You can do everything with 50 megabit. There's that's uh, you know you, you can watch videos and do everything. But if there's 10 of you using it, then that's where 50 megabits may not be good if there's many many of you. So if you have a family and they're all using the internet, uh, you probably want at least you know 20 megabits per person. Because that's the only reason you you're going beyond 20 megabits is because uh, you know the network is shared. You feel good, terminus, terminate. Is it terminus or terminus? Terminus, terminus. Okay, so. Um, uh, just bridge my computer's Wi-Fi card to use a Wi-Fi router. Just bridge my computer's Wi-Fi card to use a Wi-Fi router. Uh, what, what are you doing there, Josmo? So this is a VPN. This is a VPN router. So it's not just an average router. It's a VPN router. So you would have to add an additional router if you want the higher speed, yes. Otherwise, you can stop with this. I'm just saying it's uh, there's no dead end with the configuration that I gave. So this kind of setup here is open ended. So you can you you're not going to come back to me and say, well, you're you know this is underpowered now. No, if you have the Pi Four version, it will never be underpowered because you go with six. Oh, shoot. I dropped it. So hold on. I, I dropped the pie. Hold, it dropped on the keyboard. Okay. <clears throat> Fell apart too. So yeah. So this is a so uh, so this allows you to you can start with just this and your exi and one other Wi-Fi router that will give you two Wi-Fi's, and then. As your network needs increase, it's never a dead end. So that's why this solution, that's why the solution is uh, is very nice because there's no dead end to this. Because I'm a, more of a higher end setup. I have you know gigabit routing, so you know I I can share my network you know uh, in my entire house. Yeah. So this routes to my VPN. Uh, or any other VPN. So, but obviously, I recommend you buy my VPN because then that will. Uh, first of all, there's no restriction. If you use this, there's no restric restriction to the traffic. So you can actually have as many people use the the wired network. You can actually, you know, there, you're not subject to a six user limit. I didn't know this was Linus Tech Tips. Linus Tech Tips doesn't know anything. Go watch him uh, show you uh, wired VPN networks for privacy. <clears throat> Does he even know what he's talking about? He has a very cursory uh, understanding of all this. <clears throat> so he, yeah, so he can sell you a VPN. That's all he does. Uh, uh, to the Linux computer, bridge net to Wi-Fi card, and then broadcast Wi-Fi signal for laptop, etc. Where's the VPN, Josmo? Where's the VPN? The, the whole point of this setup is that, you know, it's got to be like effortless. So you don't have to think about it. You make a decision about what devices gonna, are going to be connected. I, can, I can't tell you how this simplified my life. I don't have to think about VPNs at all for anyone in my house. Okay? I, I don't have to think about, you know, should this be on a VPN? Do I have to install software? I don't have to think about that. I just connect to the Wi-Fi. My, my VPN is $89 a year, not per month, for six devices. <clears throat> but obviously, 
with this, you don't need, there's no limit. Whatever the capacity of this is. Okay, I, I don't have a monthly price. <clears throat> this is, uh, the software for it is 99. It's 99 for the software. You can buy your own Raspberry Pi or you can buy it with Raspberry Pi. Uh, but the software portion is only 99 okay so you're running Tor on Linux yeah so this gives you Tor too so Tor is part of this so you can make this a Tor gateway this can be Tor or VPN so if you don't want to spend money on a VPN this is a Tor gateway though it's slow because Tor is only 10 megabits okay okay so this uh, this is just this is a just a lot simpler solution so any other solution is kind of complex. I, I'm already telling you some of the problems with loading software like putting OpenVPN on your Android or your uh, your uh, iPhone because when it goes to sleep mode, the VPN isn't running. Okay, VPN is not running, so so it's not not the best solution. So I this just simplifies it. And make sure you don't make a mistake. As I explained at the beginning of the video, why it's important not to make a mistake with the uh, with the uh, the routing if you make a mistake with the routing uh, you will accidentally put yourself in that database location database as I showed you uh, with the New York Times article which I will link in the video okay so uh, somebody comes and says uh, I'm taking their data and copyright whatever so yes it's fair use okay so uh, so hopefully that answers that question and I'll skip to another topic here for for the rest of the uh, rest of the broadcast are we are we okay with this uh, if there's any more questions ask now then I'll switch to the last video I did which was about uh, the uh, the blobs okay so if you uh, any more, if you don't have any more questions about this, then I will talk about the the blog question. Can you use your Wi-Fi Pi and add RetroPie with it? I have a Pi 3B Plus with RetroPie installed. Uh, I do not. You can use the 3B Plus as a Wi-Fi modem, but I do not recommend you use it as a wired router. It's not fast enough for wired router use. Okay. So this is best. Pi 4 is what you need with a gigabit router and gigabit switch if you're going to do wired routing. It's, it's very CPU intensive. So hello from Singapore. Hello, Kevin. Okay, so it's very CPU intensive. So Pi 4 only for wired. The Pi B plus can be used for non-wired, although the Pi 4 is faster. Okay, so I've shifted everything now is Pi 4 on the router because it's just significantly faster. Okay, I think it's like double double the speed of a 3B+. plus. Okay, what distribution are you planning on running? Uh, when you run my, when, when you run my, uh, when you run my VPN, you're automatically uh, on Pi Hole. My VPN has Pi Hole in it. So, when are you, what are you going to incorporate video consultations? <laughs> I don't have such a service. Got it. When you buy a new one, it will probably look up uh, yours. Does the Pi 4 have a fan? Uh, I just got my case with a fan. I bought it for 10 bucks, and I just got it today. So I'm going to change the case for this. It needs a fan. Okay, look at uh, I put heat sinks on there. There's three heat sinks. Okay, that's not enough. It's running at 65 degrees with with the heat sink. When I put the cover on, I have to take the cover off. The, off then the, the uh, temperature goes down 10 degrees. So, so I need the fan. The fan should drop it down quite a bit more because it's still overheating. So. Uh, so I got a new case that I bought from 10 bucks from from Amazon. So if you're using a Pi 4, 
uh, order a case with uh, with uh, a fan. Yeah. So what I've told that's exactly what this is. Who her spat? So what I've done here and talked about this video is to show you that you know you can make it convenient. You don't have to make you know sacrifices on your network just because you want to go to a VPN. Uh, Grub is better than System D. <laughs> oh gosh, uh, you're not gonna go uh, say BSD too, or that's somebody else. I think you're not the BSD guy, Pizza. Okay. Anyway, so so uh, are we uh, are we uh, clear on that? So back to uh, so the the uh, uh, I wonder what it throttles at. So when I'm using a, uh, well, it's gigabit. So when I'm using a, a Pi 4 with, uh, with uh, uh, gigabit USB 3 adapters and gigabit switches, uh, I can, I, I don't, the limit is not reached inside here. The limit is reached elsewhere. So this is not a, uh, this is not where the, the problem is as far as speed so but it will overheat when you're running videos like let's say two of you are running constant videos on it uh the memory chip gets so sucking hot that's why it needs a fan <clears throat> okay uh and you can actually uh overclock it so i didn't even try overclocking it so if i overclock it if it will really need a fan okay uh, it throttles it. It's at about sixty-five degrees to start to. Yeah, I think it uh, it sh it shuts down at about sixty, maybe like sixty-six degrees centigrade. That's very hot. Sixty-six degrees centigrade. That is very hot to the touch. Very very hot. Okay, that's almost uh, ready to burn you. You know, that's uh, yeah. Sandboxing your browser, etc., helps too. Uh, Josma says, turning on VPN now. Okay, so next uh, next topic. <clears throat> next topic. So a lot of people didn't actually, uh, you know, watch my video on uh, the uh, the blob, the binary blob, because they're saying, well. Sounds too techy for me, and I don't really understand it, so don't care. So, uh, you know, nobody's watching uh, the uh, binary blob video. So, so when, you actually, when you actually find out the truth about what I'm telling you in that video, because uh, as it turns out, what I'm saying, you know, in the video was not based on actual reality it was based on a theory so when you actually find out what the reality is then you will really say wow that is so disgusting because the reality is much worse than the, than my video how many hours is that equal to before overheating it doesn't overheat if you have a fan running normal things Okay, so it will overheat if you don't put a fan to it and you're using a gigabit port. This is what pulls the power and the memory for, you know, when you're sending all that traffic, it goes into the memory. And the, the fast move, movement of memory is, uh, is what's causing it to overheat. So I found that the, uh, yeah, the memory chip is what's getting hot. Memory chip is extremely hot. So, like it's ready to melt. So, if you have a fan, then it shouldn't shouldn't occur. Okay, so let's talk about the blob video. <clears throat> so in the blob video, basically what I'm uh, what I focused on was the fact that there are hidden software. The hidden software is in uh, three main parts on a typical device. 
there's more, but the rest are not as serious. The main the main parts of the blob are in the portions called SOC or system on a chip. So the SOC devices are the GPU, the graphical processing unit, the cell baseband modem, and the Wi-Fi adapter. So those are the three places typically where you have blobs. Okay? So does your Braxme have heat sinks installed? No, no, I don't. I just buy this from uh, Amazon and give it to you. I don't make money off this. So you can buy it yourself or buy it from me. It doesn't matter. Uh, so if you, uh, so the new ones all have heat sinks. Yeah, included. I just buy it from Amazon and then I, you know, it's it's priced in there, including including the uh, the uh, the SD card and the case and everything. Don't forget to like this vid. Please like this. There are only six likes. Wow, you guys don't like what I'm talking about? No one's hitting like on the video? Is it that bad? How many people are watching right now? Even the numbers are weren't, weren't a lot. Only 48 people watching. And you're not hitting like, so you don't like it. <clears throat> Well, if you don't like it, I better change topic. So anyway, I'm responding to their 35, 36 likes. So I, I'm uh, I'm uh, responding to, you know, request for information. I'm responding to uh, request for information. So this broadcast is because I got asked a question and I, I had to demonstrate it live because, you know, in a short video, it's very hard to do so. Okay. Yeah, it's showing 37. There are 28 likes on... Uh, yeah, I see 20. Well, I don't know if you forget or you just, just don't like. <laughs> so, so maybe you don't like, yes. So anyway, yes, there are 30-some uh, 30, uh, 30 likes. Okay, so anyway, back to the blob thing. So my blob video... Thank you, AMG. Uh, the blog video talked about uh, the fact that uh, there are hidden programs running on your phone that nobody really knows anything about. And it's found in the GPU, the graphical processing unit. And if you don't know what a GPU is, uh, in order to speed the reaction, you know, when you you're on your phone, let me pull up my one plus one here. So this is a one plus one running running lineage OS. So there's one plus one. It's running lineage OS right now, and you know, typical phone. You know, you do swipe this, that, and everything moves very, very fast. Now the reason that moves very, very fast is because of the GPU or graphical processing unit. Okay, so that's what that's what makes phones responsive. Is they they have separated the display portion of it into a separate computer called a GPU and by doing that the CPU is concentrating only on moving data around but not the screen display the screen display and the windowing is handled by the graphical processing unit or GPU now the GPU often comes with custom codes so if you have a PC and you get an NVIDIA uh, graphical processing unit or GPU then you typically there it's a separate computer now you know that a GPU like uh, NVIDIA, it's a separate computer because they now use, not now, but they've always been using NVIDIA GPUs as mining equipment for crypto. So they're using the computational skills of a GPU because it's very good at math. And they're using the computa computational skills of a, of a GPU as a computer or as an SOC. So remember this term, SOC, which is system on a chip. So when you hear the word system on a chip, it means it has a CPU, it has memory, some memory, it has input-output capability, able to send and receive data, uh, and it has storage. So basically, an SOC is a full computer. 
So on a typical phone or even on your desktop or laptop, the GPU is a separate computer inside the bigger computer. So you, you, you will know that a computer is not one single CPU. There's actually multiple. So the CPUs that we're aware of at the moment are inside the GPU. And the other one that has a CPU and SOC is the cell baseband modem. And then the third one is the Wi-Fi. So the Wi-Fi now does more than just do Wi-Fi. It's not just, you might think that the Wi-Fi is just something like this. Uh, actually, no, because the Wi-Fi now does geolocation, Wi-Fi triangulation, GPS, GLONASS, uh, and then some sensors, are uh, Bluetooth. All of that are built into one little SOC or little computer on your on your device because they're separate computers because they're separate computers they are basically independent so each SOC is running independently okay now one of the things that I mentioned in the video that's this is really the scary part was that I was saying that the there it is known that the um, baseband modem has been attacked already. So somebody was able to hack a baseband modem and get it to do things like take over the phone. So take over the telephony side of the phone, not just the phone itself, but the telephony side, meaning texting, calling, that kind of thing. Uh, and I don't mean taking over Android or iOS. It, 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 uh, uh, what the hold on a second here uh hold on a second uh something uh, said something said i'm out of battery okay i i think what is it the camera but the hold on let me just check the camera here okay hold on Said the battery, the camera, something is out of battery, and I'm like, huh? How does it run out of battery? This is plugged in. So let me see. Here's the power supply. Okay, C can you hear me? Can uh, is the uh, can you hear the sound? Anybody can tell me if the sound is at least running. Okay, uh, can you hear the sound? Can someone see if there's sound? But is the, I I know there's no video, but is there sound? Can somebody tell me if there's sound? Nobody's telling me that there's sound. Oh, audio good. Okay, okay. So I'm gonna some. Uh, so let me reboot the camera. I don't understand. Okay, thank you. There's sound. Okay. Okay, I restarted the camera. Okay. Yes, there's sound. Okay, is it back? Okay, I restarted the uh, I restarted the camera. Okay, so <clears throat> Okay, so we'll uh, see if the video cuz I can see the video now. So we should be okay. Okay, good. Okay, so I don't know what happened. So, camera good. Okay, so I just re I uh, turned off the camera uh, and powered it back on. Uh, camera need electricity. Why battery? <laughs> my my camera is a uh, is a uh, uh, fancy. You know, Sony A sixty four hundred. So it's a DSLR 
a mirrorless camera and uh and it's powered by usb so yeah so it's powered by usb so i don't know maybe the cable was loose i don't i don't know okay so uh, imagine if audio was exhausted okay so so we're we're back so back to what i was talking about the baseband modem so this is all in the video but what i didn't tell you was the baseband modem this is the part i didn't tell you in the video the video didn't explain that the u.s government mandated that they put the back door into the baseband so let me just explain this clearly to you in the u.s the baseband modem is made by Qualcomm. So if you buy a phone from a different country, let's say you buy a phone directly from China, uh, the modem will not have the same baseband because it's not made by Qualcomm. Okay? What about NAT on your Brax Wi-Fi? NAT is visible on Brax Wi-Fi. NAT is active. It doesn't route NAT. <clears throat> or it routes NAT nicely so you can see NAT. Okay. Anyway. Uh, the Pine Phone is made in China. And the Pine Phone uses a non-Qualcomm device. As far as I'm aware, it's using QuickTel modem. So maybe, I don't actually know, but this is really the reality. Uh, dual NATs, uh, they're just uh, on different subnets and the router will route through the different subnets, Crime Stoppers. So on on the, uh, on the, uh, oh, somebody, uh, sor sorry, I missed the super chat. Thank you for the super chat. Uh, uh, thank you for giving the super chat. Appreciate it. Wow, that's, uh, that's awesome. Thank you so much. Uh, it doesn't... Let me see. Uh, Ryan. Thank you, Ryan. Thank you for the super chat. Thank you. That is so appreciated. That's very nice of you. Anyway, back to, uh, back to uh, uh, the, the baseband. So, if you're using Qualcomm, so they're kind of mandated. If you're selling phones in the U.S., it's mandated that you use a Qualcomm chip on there, apparently. Because the carriers are required to have the ability to spy on you uh, or to tap your phone by law. This is part of a law called the Kalia Act. It's C-A-L-E-A, -E crime something. Uh, somebody can uh, check the uh, uh, law enforcement uh, something, uh, something assistance law enforcement act. Okay, and it's called CALEA, C-A-L-E-A. -E it was passed uh, during the Clinton administration. So, it, during the Clinton administration, they said, okay, all of you selling cell phones will have to provide a backdoor to every phone using the baseband. And, and you have to provide a backdoor. So if the law enforcement says, we want to track you, that they will be able to track you, that there's 911 calling for free and all that. That's part of the uh, Kalia Act. So basically, every phone has a backdoor by mandate of law. So if your phone is made for the U.S., if it's made to work in the U.S., it's going to have a Qualcomm chip in there with the baseband able to react to whatever software is being used by the carrier to say we want to tap any device, they should be able to do so. Okay? So that's pretty bad news, okay? that's In itself, it's bad news because it means that there's a backdoor on every phone. Now, do you have the backdoor if the phone doesn't come from the U.S.? Because there are two companies that make baseband chips. The other company is called MediaTek. MediaTek is from Taiwan. I actually don't know if... If, you know, they're, A, are they allowed to sell those phones here? And what happens to the carrier if the, 
if the uh, phone does not have the capability because it doesn't have the Qualcomm chips. I d- Communication Assistant for Law Enforcement Act. Okay, Kalia. Okay, so I don't actually know uh, since it's not global, it's U.S. So the, the code for the back door to a- access every phone, 911, uh, 911 calling and all this, 911 location, all of that is tied to the CALEA Act. Or CALEA is an act, so it already has the word act in there. So CALEA law. Okay, so so uh, so the issue now is, is, is that a good thing? So that basically we allowed the surveillance to be built into the Qualcomm chip chips because it's required by law, as I just said. The problem, guys, the Librem 5 is not, the modem doesn't come from the U.S. It comes from uh, uh, it's a different company. Uh, Mobi something. Uh, and then the, the second modem comes from China. So I don't know if uh, Librem 5 uses the uses uh, a Qualcomm type chip. Okay, so so basically the the two the uh, normal Android and iOS phones. You know, if you buy a Samsung Galaxy, an iPhone, uh, you know, a LG, whatever typical phone you buy for for in the U.S. Uh, will have a Qualcomm chip. So most of the chips sold in the U.S. Most of the phones sold in the U.S. will have a Qual- Qualcomm chip. I don't know if it's legal to use a phone. Well, nobody's stopping us to get used, using a used phone. I, I don't get stopped using it. But uh, uh, the question is, does that have the ability to do the the uh, surveillance that can occur on the Qualcomm chip? So we don't know the answer to this. But here's the problem, guys. Here's the problem, guys. China hacked the Kalia features of the broadband. China hacked the broadband features of the, uh, the uh, Kalia features of the broadband. So China is actually able to listen in on the phone. This is an old hack. You can find many records of this already. This is nothing new. If you search for Kalia in China, you will find what I'm talking about. So this is like crazy because if China did it and if the government did it, there must be a bunch of hackers that have done it too. Okay. Uh, shutting down. The video again, so I have to, I'm just <clears throat> rebooting the camera, hoping that I'll work. Hold on. Okay, I'm just rebooting the camera here. Hold on. Maybe I need a... Uh, let me plug the camera into a higher capacity port. Okay, hold on a second. It may be that the camera is not... Uh, it's not does not have sufficient charging power. So hold on a second here, if you can hear. Okay, so you're exhausted too. So let me just give it one more try here. Okay, I just plugged into. Uh, plugged into a different uh, USB port it's probably uh, it's probably like uh, uh, too much too much power coming out of that port Uh, it didn't start hold on a second here Uh, battery exhausted. That is so weird. Made in Japan. Okay, so I don't know what to do here. We're turning into, we're turning into podcast mode here. <laughs> okay, I'll 
I'll put a, a background in here for a moment so, so you have something to look at, okay? Okay, I, it won't fire up, so I don't know. So it won't fire up. So let me, uh, let me just turn it off for a second. Give it a few seconds here. Okay, shooting. Okay, so, so, uh, uh, yeah, I don't, I don't understand why the, the battery is running out. But anyway, so just, we'll just give it a second here to at least power it up for, I was just hoping to power it up for a few minutes. So the, the, the issue, the issue is that the Chinese have already hacked that, the baseband modem, uh, uh, certainly, each carrier is required by law to be able to hack into the modem. And uh, so, what about regular hackers that have access to the modem? What about three-letter agencies? Obviously, they set the law, so they obviously can have access to, to the modem. So, this is really, really, really depressing. Here, I'll put a... Can I put a different background on? Let me just... Okay. Uh, how about this for a background? Okay, so, so uh, yeah, so sorry about the uh, camera being off at the moment. Let me just, I'm just making sure, I'm just giving it a few moments for it to charge. We'll see if it can fire up. So anyway, so that's my concern now, is that the idea of a blob in the baseband is a lot more serious than even I uh, was understanding, because I didn't understand that at the carrier level, they are already required to break into the phone by law. So, anyway, I'm going to give it a try again here and try the camera to see if I can turn it on. And how long it will turn on. Okay, so, <clears throat> I don't know how long this will last, so I may have to cut off this. I may lose the uh, the broadcast, so I may lose it. So we'll see how long it lasts. But anyway, so I I hope you you understand the uh, the risk factors that I'm talking about here. This is why this is why the the only solution actually is to be able to turn off the device. So if you put a kill switch on it. Uh, also, if you have a foreign-made broadband, uh, baseband that's not made uh, for the U.S. market, like the ones used in the Pine Phone and the uh, Librem 5, there may be some benefits to that I'm not even aware. There may be some benefits to the baseband not coming from the U.S. from for both the, uh, the Librem 5 and the Pine Phone. So this is going to be very, very interesting. I don't think Huawei phones use Qualcomm. I do not think Huawei phones use Qualcomm. But remember, do the Chinese put their own spyware on there? We don't, we don't know. So, okay, so just because you have a Huawei doesn't mean it's safe. It just means somebody may have a different, different backdoor. Okay, so it's best still to have a switch. Okay, nothing from Huawei is open source. So whatever you're getting is not open source. Okay, so just so you know, th hello, uh, uh, the zircone. Okay, so do do you uh, do you understand now what why this is a lot more serious than you think? So now you understand now how the cell baseband becomes extremely important to be switched off. The Pine Phone is <clears throat> made in China. All phones are made made in China. <clears throat> Will a kill switch work if there is a SIM card anyways? If there's no SIM card, uh, I think that also kind of cuts out the uh, the control of the device. So uh, removing the SIM card is equally good, but it's a little harder to do. So, so yes, if you want to protect yourself, take off the SIM card. You can do that too. Okay? That's why the, the government hate on Huawei going for Pine Phone. So anyway, do you understand what I'm saying here? I, I you know, this may not be 100% clear that the risks are much bigger than we, we actually think. So the surveillance has gone, you know, hardcore. Okay, if I, uh, if, if I, if the, if this, my camera goes down, I'm going to switch to the, uh, 
to the screen my screenshot here so uh, I'm going to uh, show you the New York Times thing uh, as a transition if the if the camera goes down okay assume the stuff is a given you're dealing with a well we're not dealing with that pentagate we're dealing with too many parties that you know in this case, it's uh, all the devices, all the broad, uh, the baselines are made by, or the copy, or the patents are held by two companies, most of them. Uh, you can't make a baseband without the permission of MediaTek or Qualcomm. So we don't know what's in there. Okay. So how long do you think Pine Phone will take to be ready for an average user? Uh, I think the Pine Phone should be uh, usable. Uh, Pretty much uh, in April. Okay. The screen kind of died here. The screen died, but it doesn't mean we'll shut down yet. Because I want to show you. So while the screen is dead, I'm going to show you. This is from the New York Times. Okay. So... At least you can hear me, and then we'll end the video on this on this uh, on this broadcast here. But this is the uh, the uh, New York Times, and it shows all those little dots. Those are your phones. So these are based on collected data, based on what I just said about phone locations and IP address lookups and all that. This is what's being sold now. All of these look. Just watch that. They know where every phone is. Watch that, guys. Okay, New York Stock Exchange. This is beachfront of Los Angeles. I recognize this. This is, looks like uh, Venice Beach. Okay, so they're already showing you who are in all the parts of Venice Beach here. The Pentagon. Those are all the people with their cell phones at the Pentagon. Yeah, this is on a website, the New York Times. I'll, after the video, after my broadcast, I'll put, post a link. Since I'm not going to be able to get back on here. Since my camera, camera's dead. Okay. So, I'm just showing you this since I can show you a screen. This is the Pentagon, guys. So how secure can you be when you're walking around with your phones and they everyone knows where everyone is? And by the way, this is the, the big the big picture. They can obviously identify individuals in here. Individuals can be identified. I pulled my SIM after starting Spotify playlist, but put SIM in a different phone. Spotify played for 30 minutes on the phone without SIM. Leads me to believe pulled matter phone still has IMEI. No, that's not... No, uh, Spotify, uh, Spotify uses, you know, Wi-Fi. Okay, so now this is the White House. Can you, Look at this. I mean, it's crazy. <laughs> it's crazy, okay? They can see people wandering around the White House. Th those are, you know, as you move around, each one of those is tracking every location in the White House. Uh, at uh, Mar-a-Lago, President Trump's Palm Beach Resort. I mean, you don't think this is crazy, guys? Okay, there you go. This is from a New York Times article, and I, I'll post a link. I'll post a link in the... Uh, in uh, Your phone has Wi-Fi. When I get my Braveheart edition, I'll try Manjaro and Postmarket OS. Okay, so... So this is from the uh, New York Times, New York Times article, and it's something that I have been talking to you about for four years. Nothing new here, uh, except that the New York Times said it. But I'm saying the same thing. I've been saying it for years. Uh, this is an article they just posted on December 19, and and uh, you know I've been telling you this for four and a half years. You can watch my videos on Periscope talking about the same stuff for four and a half years. Okay. <laughs> Why are there thousands of people in Trump's resort? Uh, apparently not profound enough, Mr. H. So that's why I'm telling you that why you need to worry about this because I don't want to be one of these dots. 
I do not want to be one of this dot, these dots. So you may want to be, you may be okay because you have nothing to hide. You say, well, I'm going to be one of these dots like all of these thousands of people. But, you know, see, this is a uh, beachfront in Los Angeles. So in theory, one of these dots could be me. Well, fortunately, I take care of myself so I don't end up as one of these dots. Okay? So that's, uh, I, uh, so anyway, now, so so you understand my fear and why, you know, I do my best to set up my networks and my 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 situation to, to at least start the preventing of the data uh, at various levels. And this is just one of them. This is not it. This is not enough. You got to do more things. Okay? You've been a dot. I've been a dot. All of you have been dots. Okay? So anyway, since uh, I'm going to give the uh, camera one last try here to see if I can come back and do the broadcast. Hold on a second here. We're going to see if I can go with a camera mode. Okay, camera, at least I can, uh, you know, have a couple more minutes here. It's better to be a dot amongst the clutter. Uh, unfortunately, Mr. H, it's not just a dot since they know the identity of the phone, IP address. They know who you are. Okay? So it's very important to really, you know, uh, <clears throat> consider your, your, your privacy profile and what you're doing and why, why what I'm talking about here is very important because you do not want to end up as a dot. Okay? Do not end up as a dot, Mike L. Okay, so I'm going to presume I'm going to lose, lose the broadcast. So when, when the camera shuts down, then obviously I have to end the broadcast. So uh, hopefully you enjoy that. And uh, uh, there may be cell phone walkers to fold the system. <laughs> you don't need that, Jay. Just uh, t turn, take off the SIM card or shut the, uh, shut the uh, kill switch. So you don't need a walker. Kill switch will do it. Okay, a VPN, a kill switch, that's going to do it. What we need is some software to fold the, fold the uh, Wi-Fi uh, SOC. So that may be uh, something that somebody can come up with next to confuse the... Uh, I know, you can put a fake GPS uh, satellite <laughs> over, uh, create a little uh, attachment that creates fake GPS uh, signals so the phone gets confused. It's not about your appearance. It's about your spirit. Uh, coming back tomorrow night. I don't know, AMG. I, I'm, uh, I guess, just have too much to do. But uh, uh, I don't know. I don't want to do too many live streams right now. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm uh, more interested in making actual videos. So I'd like to make two videos a week. But it's, it's hard. Making a video is hard, guys. It's you know, video is hard work. A video, you know, is you know, including research, just takes several days of work to do. Buy a doggy backpack and put your phone on it. The phone, the Hong Kong protesters were green dots too. So Double J, everyone, you know, didn't watch my phone, my Hong Kong protesters video, and this is what, exactly what I'm talking about. So yes, yeah, so obviously, if they have your dot, the dot is known that you were at the protest. Now it may take them. A little bit of time to get that data. It's not immediate because it has to be compiled by these third parties. So will Apple, Android bring out kill switches? They never will, Jay. They will never do that. Use Nokia from the 90s. Cell flares. My pet. Good idea. Put You want to put the uh, phone on your pet? Pet has to roam around town, though. So so I hope you, you understand, you know, Understand the seriousness of the topic that I'm I'm presenting here. It's it's not it's not a joke when I talk about you know hiding from these companies that sell the data because I don't want to end up as a dot. Okay, I do not want to end up as a dot. So <clears throat> that's what we don't want. So if you want to be a dot, you know, then don't do anything. But uh, otherwise, then follow my lead and. Uh, uh, protect yourself. So anyway, happy new year, guys. 
any uh, any more Q and A questions before I go? I'll you know hang up for a bit here and see if there's any Q and A uh, in this coming year. So I'm gonna try to you know research more on Clea and and you know give you my my assumptions about it. There's some things that I don't know about, like what chips are in what chips are in a Huawei phone. See, some of this I don't know where to get the answer from. Uh, if there's an insight, some of you are insiders I've talked to. If you're a phone insider, could you tell me if the Huawei, uh, if a uh, baseband is purchased outside of the U.S., will it have the same Qualcomm chips? Uh, you know, otherwise I have to maybe get a hold of a phone, international phone, and go look at a microscope and see what's in there. But I need to uh, find out if if the uh, baseband, whatever spyware they put in is the same you know internationally or if it's different or what governments are part of this so uh if you if uh if any of you are uh, insiders i appreciate it if you could pass that information to me quietly on brax.me you can find me in brax.me you don't have to do it openly do not post a comment on a youtube video you can contact me in an, my encrypted platform open source brax.me it's open source so talk to me there, encrypted, and uh, you might be able to get that info. Well, I uh, now that I've provided you with a kind of a sense of what I'm looking at, we need to find out what exactly is in the baseband chip as it pertains to Kalia. Okay, Kalia is uh, somebody type Kalia again. Law Enforcement Act. So CA Law Enforcement Act. What was CA again? Um, anyway, okay. So the video, the video died. The video died. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna say, hang on a second. Okay, the video died. So I'm gonna uh, say good night, and uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna uh, figure out why my battery is shutting down on the camera at a later time. Thank you for uh, being here, and I'll post a video early in the week. Thanks for watching, guys. I'm going to sign off here in a second after I figure it out. Okay. Good night.